without question, without a doubt, Jehovah is God. He didn't need to be elected. He's God without our votes. He's God all by himself. Thank you, choir, for reminding us of that awesome fact. I know not what, if any, effect our thought has on you, but it has a tremendous effect on me. I'm affected greatly by the thought. All oh, brothers and sisters, the mere fact that I am seen by the watchful eyes of the Lord moves me in a tremendous manner. The fact that nothing concerning me goes unknown, unnoticed, or unseen by the Lord. Oh, brothers and sisters, Proverbs 15 and 3 puts it on this wise. It says that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. But the songwriter put it in this fashion. His eyes are on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Oh, brothers and sisters, it is a reality, whether we embrace it or accept it or not, it is a reality uh, that we are seen by the Lord. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I thought about it on numerous occasions, the fact that uh, many people uh, take notice of their behavior and their conduct. Many people are particular about how they behave and conduct themselves when they are seen by policemen. But oh, I stand before you today to tell you there is one far greater than policemen whose eyes are always upon us. The eyes of the Lord are always watching us. We are always under his divine surveillance. Be careful how you conduct yourself. The Lord is watching. Be careful what you say. The Lord is listening. Be mindful of how you treat other people. Our Heavenly Father is watching. Oh, brothers and sisters, it is a sobering thought for me uh, that I am seen by the Lord. Oh, brothers and sisters, our text on this morning uh, exposes us to a woman that I must admit I greatly admire. A woman that the more I've studied uh, this report, the more that I have studied her life, the more my admiration has grown for her. Oh, brothers and sisters, uh, the woman in our text, I have come to greatly admire because she overcame certain issues and concerns 
and made her way to church. I admire her because she overcame personal concerns regarding her own physical body, her own issues, my brothers and sisters, with a deformed body, deformed greatly, disfigured greatly. She overcame all of the disfigurement and the deformity and still went to church. Oh, brothers and sisters, I must park here for a minute. Oh, terribly disfigured, terribly deformed. She suffered from a condition that theologians refer to as curvature of the spine that caused her to be extremely bent. And stooped. Bowed together. Terribly deformed, terribly physically disfigured. But she overcame those issues and still made her way to church. Now I threw that out there to help us hopefully to think about it the next time my brothers and sisters uh, we stay at home just because it's raining. And God help us if it thunders. But it never ceases to interest me how it can be storming, how it can be raining even harder, and the conditions can be even worse on Monday. And we still go to those jobs. We still go to those workplaces. She overcame challenges with her own physical issues, her physical deformity, her physical disfigurement, and went to church. I'm sure she looked at herself and thought about, I'm in a horrible shape. I'm in a terrible condition. And I would probably do best to stay at home. Oh, brothers and sisters, are there any of you who've ever had to face some temptations on Sunday to stay at home? But oh, despite all that was wrong with her, she made her way to church. You know, so many of us, oh, allow any little trivial thing to keep us away from the house of the Lord. And look at what she would have missed out on. Look at all of the blessings that she would not have received if she would have remained at home. But she went to church. Lean over and tell somebody it's good to go to church. Try to make it to church every Sunday that you possibly can because you never know the blessings that you will miss out on if you fail to go. Now she overcame, oh brothers and sisters, the challenges of her own physical deformity and her own physical disfigurement and went to church. But that's not the only thing she overcame. She also overcame, my brothers and sisters, 
the possible issues that she would experience with cold, insensitive people. She overcame the possible issues that she would experience with cold, insensitive people and still went to church. She said, there's possibly going to be some cold, insensitive folk out there at that synagogue, but I'm going. I'm going anyhow because I'm not going for them. What, I, what do I mean by cold and sensitive people? I believe, brothers and sisters, that she realized that there would be some people who would be staring at her. There would be some people so cold and insensitive they would be pointing at her. She possibly knew there would be people who would be whispering and talking about her. I'm sure she realized all of that and overcame all of that and went on to church. Are you praying with me? Oh, brothers and sisters. Oh, I admire her greatly. Yeah, 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 too many people. Let a few negative people keep you away from the house of the Lord. Oh, brothers and sisters, when I come to church, my focus is not on them, it's on him. And the Lord has fixed me so I can look over the them and focus on him. Are you praying with me? She overcame what I knew were some strong issues in order to make her way to the church. I'm deformed, I'm disfigured, and they're possibly gonna be staring at me and talking about me, but I'm going anyhow. I'm going anyhow. She made her way to church. And all oh, brothers and sisters, I'm glad that she made it to church because Jesus was there. Jesus was there. Oh, when you read the report, Scripture tells us in verse 10 uh, that uh, on that particular day, uh, he was teaching, in verse 10, in one of the synagogues. Can I get a witness? Oh, oh, and isn't it good to show up when Jesus is in the house? Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, she made her way to church and Jesus was teaching. But uh, before I leave you, there are just a few things uh, that the Lord urged me to share with you. Amen. The Lord told me to tell you a few things that the text reveals that the scriptures tells us, that the report shares with us. Number one, when she got there, the Lord saw her. The Lord saw her. He saw her. Now there were other people who saw her, but they possibly saw her with criticism. They possibly saw her with insensitivity and disdain, but Jesus saw her with compassion and love. The Lord saw her. He didn't just, my brothers and sisters, see her condition. 
He looked beyond her flaws. He looked beyond her physical shortcomings and he saw her needs. There were a number of folk in the synagogue on that Sabbath, but Jesus saw her and he saw her with love and he saw her with compassion. Can I get a witness? Some folks will see you, but they don't see you with love. Some people will see you, but they don't see you with compassion. Jesus saw her with love and compassion. Now, I think I need to tell you, she was by no means ready to be a candidate for the Miss America pageant. She was by no means ready to be a candidate for the Miss Universe pageant. Still, the Lord saw her. She had some stuff wrong with her. But still the Lord saw her. And I got happy at the house thinking about it. Oh, because no matter how long we've been saved, we're not perfect. Meaning that we still have some stuff wrong with us. Yeah. She was disfigured. She could not stand up erect. She was disfigured. She could not stand up straight. And she was unable to straighten herself out. Let me tell you a good place for folks that need to get straight should come. I'm so tired of hearing folks say, oh, I'm coming to church. Just as soon as I get myself straightened out, I'm gonna beat y'all there. Listen, if we could straighten ourselves out, there would be no need for Jesus. Jesus died to help us get straight. He left his royal throne in glory and came to this sin-cursed world to help men and women, boys and girls, get straight. She had stuff wrong with her, but he saw her. And aren't you glad that he saw you in spite of the stuff that was wrong with you? Aren't you glad that he still saw you in spite of your shortcomings, your weaknesses? He still saw you not with disdain, but with love and with compassion. The Lord saw her. Lean over and tell somebody, the Lord saw her. Oh yes, yes, and if he saw her, he'll see you in me. Oh, but I must not tarry. He did more than just see her. The Bible says, after he saw her, he went even further. He called her. Can I get a witness? It's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. He called her. Oh, brothers and sisters, the record tells us he called her to him. Can I get a witness? Yeah, he called her. He called her. Yes. And oh, he called her, my brothers and sisters, to him. And oh, I got happy thinking about it. Despite all of her disfigurement, 
despite her deformity, despite the stuff that was wrong with her, he called her to him. Can I get a witness? It all gels with that passage of scripture where the Lord says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I got something for you. I will give you something. You don't have to pay for it because if you were required to pay for it, you wouldn't have enough money to buy it. I will give you rest. Didn't he say? Oh, yes, he did. He called her to him. And oh, brothers and sisters, oh, I remember vividly the time in my childhood when I first heard him calling me. Calling me out of a life of sin calling me to believe on him and receive him as my savior and my Lord. Oh, is there anybody in here who has heard him call you? Is there anybody in here who can test? I want to talk to some folk who have no problem testifying that the Lord has called you. I need to talk to some call folk. Folks who have been called by the Lord. The Lord called her. That's number two. But all oh, brothers and sisters, there's another thing that the Lord did. Number three, he touched her. The Lord touched her. First, he saw her. Secondly, he called her. And thirdly, he touched her. The Bible puts it this way. He laid his hands upon her. Can I get a witness? Out of all the stuff that was wrong with her, out of all of her deformity and her disfigurement, he still laid his hands on her. Now let me tell you something. When the Lord touches you, you will never be the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, listen, when you've been touched by the Lord, you don't have to go around saying, I think I've been touched. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I said, no, no, I said, no, no, I said, no, no. When the Lord touches you, you know you've been touched. The Lord laid his hand on her. Oh, brothers and sisters, I think I need to tell you that uh, there's something about his hands. His hands are awesome. Listen, his hands can make the difference in any of our circumstances, in any of our situations. He's got wonder-working hands. He's got life-changing hands. The Lord laid his hands on her. And oh, I think I need to tell you, the songwriter put it this way, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah, when he touches you, he makes you whole. Oh, brothers and sisters, the master 
touched her. The Lord touched her. Now, I usually give you three points. The Holy Ghost said, throw in a four. <laughs> it was the fourth one that had me rearranging some of Sister Black's furniture. It was the fourth one that got me shouting and rejoicing. Number one, the Lord saw her. Number two, the Lord called her. Number three, the Lord touched her. But can I give you number four? Number four, the Lord delivered her. Help me somebody. The Lord delivered her. How do I know she was delivered? Because verse 13 says, immediately she was made straight. Immediately. Oh, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, that curvature of the spine was taken away. He didn't perform any surgery. No doctor or surgeon was required. He just touched her. And all oh, brothers and sisters, she was delivered. Can I get a witness? She was delivered. Now, I want to talk to some folk who know something about being delivered. As I close, I, I, I want to I wanna talk to some folk who know something about being delivered. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice? who can testify that you have been delivered. That there was some time in your life when you were dealing with some things, struggling with some circumstances, dealing with a crisis, and you did not know whether you would ever come out. But in stepped Jesus. And all brothers and sisters, when he got through with you, you had been delivered. Can I get a witness? Are there any delivered folk in the house? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, brothers and sisters. Yeah, I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. But oh, I showed you how she looked. Yes, on her way to church. And when she got to church, I showed you her coming in like this. But let me close by showing you how she looked when she left. When she left, there was no more this. When she left, she was able to walk upright. She was able to walk and scripture tells us that she glorified God. Now, now, I wondered, how, yeah, how was she glorifying God? Yeah, when she was walking up straight, I believe. I believe she was rejoicing over what the heavenly father had done for her and you know I've come to realize that when the Lord has delivered you you have a reason to glorify God when the Lord has delivered you you have a reason yes to shout and praise his name can I get a witness now yes yes Look at her, walking out of the synagogue. Have mercy, Lord. Upright, straight, no longer deformed. Can I get a witness? Yes, has he ever done something for you that made the difference in your condition? 
Has he ever done something for you that made the difference in your situation? Can I get a witness? And the Lord brought you out of a crisis and now you're on the other side of a crisis. Have mercy, Lord. But it's a shame when he brings you out of a crisis and you can't give him no glory. It's a shame when he brings you out of a storm and you can't give him no glory. It's a shame when he brings you out of a horrible situation and you can't rejoice and give him the praise. So if he's brought you out of some crisis, if he's brought you out of some storms, if he's brought you out of some desperate situations and now you're on the other side of a situation that you could have died in if you don't mind if you don't mind will you just join me and help me give the lord some praise if you join me and help me glorify the lord if you join me and help me rejoice for the things that the Lord has done. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Oh, can I get a witness? Oh, oh, can I get a witness? Has he brought you out of something? Yes, yes. Somebody here can say, he brought you out of a hospital room. Somebody here can say, he brought you out of a courtroom. Somebody here can say, he brought you out of financial distress. Somebody here can say, he brought you out of a bad marriage. Somebody here can say, he brought you, have mercy Lord out of family crisis but somebody else can say in fact all of us can say he brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light ain't god all right yes i've got to leave you here i've got to leave you here but are there any brought out folk are there any brought out folk are there any brought out folk? I said, folks that know, that know you know you know that the Lord has brought you out of some horrible stuff, that the Lord has brought you out of some terrible situations, and you don't mind, you don't mind glorifying God, you don't mind, you don't mind giving God the praise, yes. If you don't mind, turn around, turn around, turn around. Somebody said, yeah, you were in a bad shape, but God bless you with a turnaround. Can I get a witness? You were in a horrible situation, but God turned things around. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, show somebody what the Lord did for you. Show somebody, show somebody how he turned things around. Yes, yes, yes. Excuse me. Excuse me. But every now and then, something gets all over me. Every now and then, 
something moves me. Every now and then, I forget about the degrees I got. Every now and then, yes, I forget about, uh, yes, the blessings I receive. And I just think about no longer my position, my title, my popularity. I just think about the goodness of the Lord. I think about the goodness of Jesus. I think about... Tell somebody, people may not see me, but that's all right. I'm seen by the Lord. of the church are open. Mm. The doors of the church are open. Somebody ought to come. Mm. Somebody ought to walk out. You need to come to the Lord. You need to come to Jesus. God bless you, my brother. There's somebody else here who needs to come. If you're in the balcony, come down either of these side stairwells or take the, bike, the elevator down to this level. There might be somebody else here on the floor level and you need to come. There's an aisle that will bring you to this altar. God bless you. Come right on. Come right on. Come right on. Hmm. And as the choir leads us in this invitational selection, some have already come. But you need to walk out for yourself. Will you be the next one to come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm free. Praise the Lord. No longer bound. God bless you. Come on. No more chains. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Help us say it again. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer mine. Blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory. Come on. Listen. Church, I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. I ain't got no change holding me. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Have a say it. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. It's 
there another who will walk out? No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Is there another who will walk out? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. One last time. I'm free. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, no longer, no longer bound, no more change holding me, my soul is resting, it's not suffering, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Oh yes, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free, he set me free, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free, oh praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Said, he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Tell somebody I'm free. The call has gone out and we rejoice for the response that has come.